it feels so good. <laughs> was, that, was that a bad rendition or did it sound like I should probably never, ever, ever sing again? Well, that would be a combination of a bad rendition and you should never sing again. <laughs> so it's equal, man. It's equal. <laughs> <laughs> man, good to see your face. Hear the hard too, baritones. Man. 254 back in the pod. Um, Hards and I came up with this idea. Uh, well, actually, he came up with this idea. You got to give credit where credit's due. Um, because there is a, a large consumption more than ever, I think, of UT baseball, that this was a great idea. We preview, talk about each of the weekend series and maybe a couple of storylines in between. Um, and we're calling this uh, On Deck at the Dish with Hearts. We're going to try like to do that. this weekly on both of our platforms, Hards Knocks Life and Stories Inside the Man Cave. And we're going to dive into this. We're going to do it at a quick pace and got to give a shout out to two companies which have the best slogans in Central Texas, Honest AC and Plumbing, where a handshake still means something, Hargrove Roofing, know who's on your roof, and they're both reliable. So, Harge, I came up with a a, a theme for this okay. Texas baseball team. Patience is key. Would you say that would be the best advice for all fans or uh, anyone who just loves college baseball? Well, first off, Thank you for having me back in the Stories Inside the Man Cave podcast. It's been oh, a while. Geez. Timing has been uh, not good for either, either of us with our other careers that we have going on. But, um, yeah, I would say patience is the key this year. Um, Got to understand that this team is going to go through those bumps in the roads just like we saw in Arlington, and we'll get into that conversation as well. Yeah. Um, there was a lot to understand uh, and learn about this team. You know, there was a lot of transition with the new coaching staff, new voices in the locker room. You have some leaders in Dylan Campbell and Eric Kennedy and, of course, Tanner Witt who, who, and Lucas Gordon on the pitching yeah. side. But there's a bunch of new faces, some guys transferred in from another from other schools, and they have to understand – who they are with each other. And it's going to take some time. The beautiful thing about baseball and Sean, you know, this cause you've been around the game for quite some time. You covered the game for a while. It's every day. It's every day. You don't have to wait weeks. You don't have to wait a week. You can get right back into it and you don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. You got to get back on that horse and get back out there to play. And I think that is the beautiful part about what we're going to learn about this team how they change from day to day. That, I think that's just sage advice from, you know, for those maybe watching across the state, you may have heard of Harch, uh, maybe other parts of the country. He, he played the game, signed with UT out of, out of Colleen and played professionally on uh, the Expos organization. We all know what happened to the Expos, but uh, Harch had a good career. Um, and now he is doing many things and, from podcast to co-host at 104.9 The Horn and in the healthcare space. But and, and, and Texas baseball is is one of his loves. And he also does games broadcast uh, with Flow Sports and will fill in with Craig Way every, occasionally. But we're talking current. And I want to show you one highlight from Arlington, which the Globe Life Classic has become one of the premier – early season, begin the year with some of the best programs, <laughs> mainly Big 12 and SEC. Well, that's all it is. And Texas has been there before, and this was one of the highlights of the three-game weekend. The portal giveth and it taketh and it away. Does. Line drive right field. Going back, Borofin, and this ball's gone. Took off and a home run for Brown. Right, I feel like I was at a rave with the <laughs> lights in Arlington. Yeah, when those lights started flashing, it was a party on, man. <laughs> well, party on. So that's that's a new name right there. Is it Downtown Brown? That's what they're going by. That's yeah. what I've heard everybody, and that's what I've seen, Downtown Brown, and that's exactly what he did in that at bat in Arlington. Um, for me, with all these kids, and Porter Brown is one of them that's coming in, grad transfer from TCU, so you've seen him in the Big 12 and, and probably know his name, but he's going to have to find his way. They got him batting third in this lineup, and he, 
And David Pierce said it when he gets going, he's got one of the best bats that you'll ever see. But the, the thing is, he's, he, he has to acclimate himself with uh, Texas Longhorn lore. I mean, he's been on the other side fighting the Texas Longhorns. Now he's got to fight with the Texas Longhorns. But I think he'll be fine over there in left field. David said that he believes that the outfield is going to be interchangeable. And what I mean by that is all three of those guys can play all three of those positions out there. So they'll get, a, they'll get every opportunity to be the leaders of this team moving forward. So it's exciting. It's exciting to see some of these new guys. But yeah, if you come to the ballpark, make sure you bring your uh, program or buy one because you're going to be trying to figure out who's who. That's for sure. <laughs> So they faced Arkansas, Vanderbilt, and Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, you, if you look at 0 for 3, I know a couple of years ago they went 0 for 3 and ended up in Omaha that season, 0 for 3 in that same classic. Um, I mean, if you if you look at the scores, you look at some of the errors, it's – I mean, this is what I tweeted out. I said, listen, this team is going – this is not – the identity will not be known until probably – the end of April from you who has played the game extensively from what you saw. And I know you kind of alluded to it at the beginning. Is this all correctable or is there some areas of concern or is it just a matter of they just need game reps? I think it's more of, of, of everything. I think it's a gumbo of the opportunity since we just got past fat Tuesday. Uh, it's a gumbo of I'm opportunity. Still fat, by the way, <laughs> I think the biggest thing is repetition for sure. And there were some plays that are routine plays on, on any other day. It just happened to snowball for Texas yeah. that Sunday. And you talked about it, Arkansas, they lose the game uh, by one run, Missouri, they lose the game on a walk off and against Vanderbilt. It was just a comedy of errors. Um, they just <laughs> had so many of them, two by the shortstop, two by the second baseman and one by the catcher, and that's something that if he, those plays are made, routine plays are made, that game could be totally different too. So there's there's so much that we can look at. The biggest thing that bothered me about the entire weekend was the number of strikeouts we had at the play. Now, I know it was different because you're seeing power arms in the SEC, and a lot of these guys were running that ball up there pretty good. A lot of teams, their biggest game is the University of Texas. If they got a chance to beat them, then it, it all is good in the world. Um, but if they lose to them, they're, they're not very happy. So I I look at it and I took away with it. Obviously, I was frustrated, a lot, a lot frustrated. Yeah. But um, in the grand scheme of things and the fact that you play so many games throughout the season and in order to be in it, you want to win the Big 12. So you have a lot of opportunities, but at the University of Texas, where baseball is played and all the trips to Omaha, you expect excellence. And that's the bottom line. 100 percent. Now, I have to get off topic real quick because it is new. And I think there has been a uh, concerted effort at all levels of baseball to speed the game up and be more appealing to uh, fans and to market fans and bring them in. I saw a lot. Of, I saw this. I knew it was going to happen. I think you knew it was going to happen, everybody. But I think, was it Dylan Campbell? Yes. He, he got rung up. And I'm trying to figure out from, because you were there broadcasting the game, um, trying to figure out what he did. Because I know it's, it's batter and it's not all on the pitcher. The batter has to be in the box. Correct? Yep. Like, how does this work? How do you explain it in common language? To be language? quite honest with you, I have zero clue of what happened. It happened multiple times this weekend. And some of the games I was actually working when it happened. And I just – it's confusing to a lot of people. And the batter, Dylan Campbell, was still in the box. But he well, I don't know if he was in his stance or whatever. But if he's in the box, what are you calling him out right. for? And it happened in a crucial situation where an inning could have got busted wide open. And the same thing happened in the Oklahoma State game. They had their best hitter up at the plate, McLean, and they called him out. So, and then you've seen throughout <clears throat> the internet and baseball games, 
guys at the play trying to call timeout and the umpires not giving them time. Um, it's it's a strange situation. And I thought Coach Schlossenegel, I heard this, Coach Schlossenegel of Texas A&M, formerly of TCU, he brought up the fact that we put with the rule changes that are in, it's not necessarily as much on the coaches as it now is on the umpires. The umpires got to call balls and strikes, saves are out, fair or foul, all these infield fly, all the rules that are engaged in this in the ball game. But you also are now trying to ask them to look at a clock to make sure that everything is on time. Um, it was it was an interesting thought, and it makes so much sense because we do put a lot on the umpires. And not only that, you got fans yelling at them, balls and strikes. Ah, you're terrible. <laughs> you got coaches coming out there. How did you blow that? I want the headset. I want the headset. You know, there's so much that is involved in this with the umpires that um, in order of, of looking at how fast we can get the game, I understand pace, but let's yeah. not rush through a game because I talked about this the other day. Baseball is the only sport that's untimed where you're playing with a team. Everybody else has time on it if you're playing a team sport. There's nothing else that you do that doesn't have a time on it. That no, that's a great point. That's a great point. I think a lot of people forget that. And But I also I, – I don't have a problem with trying to improve the game, but in some ways I feel like you're, you're, you're uh, compromising the integrity yes. of baseball in many ways. Um, so, so far, I just – it's you've you witnessed all these. Um, Eric Kennedy, he's been around for a decade. Um, he's the new Austin Todd. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good start to the year, uh, pitching wise. This is one of those names you talked about on the on the roster card. You've got to pay attention to. Um, I LeBaron Johnson. Is that how you pronounce him? Name? Yep, LBJ. LBJ, eight yep. Ks on the year. I, I he's he's leading the team, but the other eight is what's not encouraging. But that can be improved. Right, that's definitely right. Um, Eric Kennedy, obviously. Uh, being the leader, being the leadoff guy, calm, even keel guy the entire time, not too high, not too low. So you need that with this team, especially after the weekend. Uh, LeBaron Johnson, he he did a great job. I think the biggest thing for LeBaron is, is learning how to be consistent when he does come into the game because he has the tendency sometimes to overthrow the baseball and try to do too much. And uh, obviously those fielding area, errors, yeah were the biggest thing. And and on Tuesday, they fielded the ball cleanly, didn't have any errors, and they went out there and won the ball game. And I attest a lot of that to the first weekend of errors to playing on turf the entire time. Your entire offseason, you've been on turf. You've been playing. You've been thinking about these true hops that you can get on the Astro turf. And then you go and play on a dirt infield. Ball jumps on you, spins a little bit different. So you you need to make those plays. I'm not making excuses for them, but it is a little bit different when you're a freshman and you, all you've been doing is practicing on that. So I will let them slide with that. Now they've gone through it and they will make those adjustments as they go. Um, but yeah, they needed to clean that up. And, you know, it, it can be overstated about Troy Tulawiski and what he meant to the team oh, last nice. year with the fielding. I'm not saying anything about the hitting. Or I'm not saying anything about anything else because Steve Rodriguez, a good friend of mine, I believe that he's going to be able to bring in some stuff fielding-wise as well. But when you lose a guy like Skylar Messenger, you lose a guy like uh, Trey Faltini, Mitchell Daly was playing second base, and then you had Ivan Melendez at first base. You lose a lot. You lost a lot of your great fielding percentage. And then you look in the outfield where you had a Douglas Hodo tracking everything down in center field. Um, left field, you had Eric Kennedy and Dylan Campbell. And you had Murph Staley in right field. You had a pretty solid defense behind you, which is why they led the conference in fielding. Um, so there, there's more to be desired, no doubt about it, when you look at these teams. And what's expected of them. And I think that they will improve as the season goes on. Right. I, I agree with you. It's, it's just a, a long season, a lot of games, as you mentioned, you, you get, you get back to work. Yep. The next day. 
Up next, a program that's on the rise from the Big Ten, Indiana, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then a rare midweek game against the number one team in the country, a future SEC opponent, LSU. The main thing is Texas needs to take it one game at a time and try to get better every single day of the week. I mean, baseball season is the very beginning of the year, so you're going to see some improvements. You're going to see better at bats. Indiana, they don't have the arms that you saw last weekend, so you might as well go up there and take some good quality hacks. I'm not saying that they're just going to lay it in there, but you need to go in there and take some uh, good quality hats. LSU will be here on Tuesday, number one team. They will actually be in Arlington starting tomorrow, depending on when you're going to post this, Sean, but starting tomorrow, Friday, at the at the Carbot Classic at the Dale Diamond, and you can watch them if you stream on D1 Baseball, D1Baseball.com. They're going to be streaming everything, and I'm actually going to be working the entire weekend there. Uh, LSU, K-State, Iowa – and Sam Houston will all be there. So you'll get if you if you get some free time this weekend, LSU plays most of the early games. Speaking of tomorrow at two o'clock, LSU will take on K State. So if you're a Texas Longhorn fan and you want to come and see what they look like and get a preview of K State, you can knock out two birds with one stone and then head over to the dish and watch the game. If not, as I said, you can stream it on D1Baseball.com. But they are they are good as uh, as good as advertised. They got some big arms over there. They can swing it like no other, and they are you know the perennial favorite to make it to Omaha. But like anything else, it's a long season. A lot can yeah. happen. You deal with injuries. Tommy White, they call him Tommy Tanks, the big third baseman who came from North Carolina State. He ended up separating his shoulder, diving in to a bag. So we don't know what his status is going to be, but they still got some guys over there that can swing at the first baseman. Morgan, uh, the DH, um, gosh, what's his name? Cruz. Cruz is, is a stud. So they've got a couple first-round picks that are going to be on display, and you know as well as I do. Them Cajuns are coming in to party, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, or even <laughs> Sunday. They're bringing it in that That's etouffee. Right. They're in bringing the it. Hey, right. And they got that pitcher from Air Force who was yeah, all skiing. out. He's pitching He's pitching tomorrow, first game tomorrow against uh, K-State. That's what they're going to run out there. So good luck, K-State batters. His first pitch of the season was 99 miles an hour, and his last <laughs> pitch – before he got taken out after throwing 98 pitches, was 98 miles an hour. He has a good trainer. Yeah, he's got a damn good trainer. And don't forget, he came from Air Force. So his mind over matter is all that it is, baby. Nothing. Not, hey, there's no such thing as adversity in Skeen's world. No uh, doubt. So, yeah, catch it. Carbot Classic, Dale Diamond, Round Rocket has become, uh, what, what's their slogan, next best thing to Omaha, something best like that. Outside of, uh, best outside of Omaha. That's it. And the Dale Diamond, Almondaris, Chris Almondaris, all those guys at the Express, Class Act, go say hi. Go jack with Harge a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a good weekend, and uh, I'm probably going to join you there Saturday. Uh, I won't interrupt your broadcast. Um, so – I'll, I'll be a sideline reporter. I'm sideline reporter. Oh, you're the dugout? Yeah, I'm dugout reporter. Oh, man, that's a, even better. You're outdoors. It's been beautiful here in Austin, Texas. Oh, so any Texas fans who are just not being logical, I'll tell you how baseball is. I'll, I'll just show you an example right here. This is what these midweek games can do to a program. The 2 popped up over the infield. They're calling for it with Kane and Dodge. He'll make the catch on top of second base, and that will end it. Lamar will beat the Aggies 7-4 to four tonight. <laughs> See? Yeah. That, that could have happened. Humility, buddy. Humility. That's why you play the game. That's why the game will giveth, and it'll taketh away. That's it right. Will. It will pump you up, but then break you down at your knees. And, and that's the beauty of baseball. It is. Hey, I want to close this out. He was uh, on your recruiting class, I believe, 
at when you sign with Texas. I think it's long overdue, but nothing ever happens on the clock that we perceive it to be. But uh, I think this is special. One of the greatest gentlemen, good advocate of the game, just a good person. This will be happening very soon. He threw across the bottom of the strike zone and threw his breaking ball off, off that pitch better than anybody I've ever seen. And maybe even true to big leaguers too, because they're, they're still missing up here. But he was across the bottom the whole game. Every single time he went out there, that's where his success was. But also know that that break and end period, there's going to be some start stops. The thing is, you just always got to be ready for your opportunity. And don't let it go when you get it. You're at the University of Texas where the expectations and the standards are very high. And you earn the right to be in this locker room. All right, so go out there every single day and represent that. And in your presentation, you forgot to say that Kurt Dressendorfer, number 10 jersey, is going to be retired and go up on the wall. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that just gave me chills, to be quite yeah. honest with you. Um, he's a great dude. He's a great dude and, and probably one of the best competitors that I ever got a chance to see. Um, on my recruiting trips, Kurt would always, when he wasn't pitching, the day that he wasn't pitching, he was always cool, talked to me, was really excited, and, you know, trying to convince me to come to the University of Texas. But if I came in on the day that he was pitching, Kirk didn't even know I was there because that's how he was uh, he was programmed. And he was one of the best dudes that I ever saw. And I know that everybody talks about the arm injury and <clears throat> what success that he would have had if he would have went and played in the pros a little bit longer. But no matter what, I think he would be the exact same person because if you tried to take the ball away from him, he'd probably fight you because that's how bad of that's how much of a competitor that he was. And that is why I believe it was long overdue because if you go back and look in the history books and where he stood, he's right there with all the best and all those ones that does have their name up on that wall. So as a friend, I'm, I'm so proud of him, but most importantly, I'm so thankful that they are blessing him with his number being retired at the university of Texas. I think it means so much more coming from you because you, you got you were really you became close to him at that age, um, and the reason why Harris didn't go to Texas, he was going to, like so many, but drafted high enough that I think it would be foolish. It would have been foolish of you not to go pro yeah. at that time. But dress, think about this: fifty-three career starts at Texas. He won forty-five of them. Yeah, three-time All-American. Played in a national championship game. Yep. He was stepping. He should have, yeah, they could have won. They should have won more than that. And <laughs> that's the that's the one thing that I sit there and I look at is like, man, they were so close. They were so close. And the talent that was coming through this university at that time, all mostly te all Texas players and from the state understood what it meant to be a Texas Longhorn and the pride that you had and the trips to Omaha were they weren't a given you had to work for them, but you knew your opportunity was going to be good compared to some of the other schools <laughs> that were out there. So uh, I'm thankful that I'm, I've stayed in touch with Kirk as long as I did. And I'm thankful that I'm going to be able to witness him get his Jersey retired and put it up there because there was only one number 10, that I will always remember, and he was one of the nastiest dudes out there. He was. He brought it hard baller. Um, God, he, there are a lot of similarities the way he pitched, like Nolan Ryan. Yeah, yeah. in many ways. And 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 Roger and Roger Clemens. Ooh, power. So power, yeah. Uh, yep. Pride of pride of Pearland, if I remember right. Yep, yep. That's back before Fozzie Whitaker was even a thought. <laughs> <laughs> hey my brother we're gonna be tracking ut baseball and it's it's and i'm i guess my advice have fun with this don't judge by losses yet this yeah. is for the next two and a half months arge would you agree this is going to be fun to see how the lineup evolves and even the bullpen and even the rotate everything everything yeah it's going to be fun to watch it's going to be and the key, you said it at the very beginning of the show, 
patience, people. Patience. I'll let you know when the panic button needs to be pushed. <laughs> hey, Hart is good about that. Be, patient. be, patient. be cool, calm, collected, no like doubt. the guy on the right. My man. You know, that's how those Colleen boys are. That's how we roll, man. Until we don't. <laughs> until we don't. <laughs> until we don't. Hey, for our guy, Harbo Hards, and the other two man cave OGs, that being Big Big Mike and Coach Mo. What do we say, Hards? We out. <laughs>